Hello everyone, what's going on? Welcome to Focus AI. So uh, this is the continuation of the part of optimized KNN. So in the previous video, what we have seen is that how we can optimize KNN or the nearest neighbor search by using two data structure, tree like data structure. One is KD tree, another one is uh, ball tree. So here we will see um, some another kind of uh, a structure, data structure by which we can uh, I mean, we can drill down the time uh, to some extent uh, for the nearest neighbor search. Okay, so this is something called locality sensitive hashing, LSH. Okay, so it works similar to hashing technique by creating some hash table. So what it does, say in a high dimensional space, there are neighboring values. Okay, so this LSH technique, what it does is that it gives all the neighboring value as the same and unique hash key and in the hash table and under that hash key it uh, creates an entry for all those neighboring points so what is what it does is that creates a unique hash value for all the neighboring points okay and stores all those neighboring points in the hash table okay so when a query point in that neighboring region appears so the same hash function will be used and the same hash value will be generated and based on that same hash value we can easily extract the nearest neighbors because in the hash table under that same hash value all the neighboring points were located right so for the query point with the same hash value we can easily get all the neighboring points so we don't have to calculate all the millions of distances for all the data points right so we can just directly get that now the problem is that it's a randomized process, it's a stochastic process. So it's not 100% accurate, okay? But it gives you the nearest neighbor's value with some high probability or high confidence value. So that is what it is showing, okay? Now it is actually reducing the time, reducing the nearest neighbor finding time drastically, but it's not 100% accurate. It will say that, okay, for this particular query point, this could be the nearest neighbors with some 95% confidence or 95% accuracy, something like that you can understand. Okay. So now how does this LSH works? So to understand that, first understand this particular diagram here. Okay. So this, this black line is nothing but our X axis and Y axis. So two dimensions and this orange line passing through origin is a line. Okay, now in high dimension, it's a hyperplane. Okay, so basically, it's a random hyperplane passing through origin. Okay, now this W is a unit vector of this random plane or random hyperplane. Okay, now the direction of the unit vector W is in this way. Okay, now there are two points x1 and x2. Okay, now just see the direction for x1 the direction is in this way and x2 the direction is this way so when this is the structure then this should be followed so x1 and w you can see x1 and w are both in the same direction so the w transpose x will be always greater than or equals to zero it would be a positive number so simply you can think like that in this side of the region, whatever the points will be there, the dot product between W and that point will be always greater than zero or will be always positive. And similarly, the, if the directions are opposite, that means if any points lying in this side of this hyperplane, then the dot product will be less than zero or a negative number. Okay. So based on this, this locality sensitive hashing works. Okay. So see, let's see how does it work. Okay. Just check like we in, in, in a high dimension space, we have some points. So this is a cluster of neighboring points and this is a cluster of neighboring points. And this red point is our query point. Okay, fine. So now what it does is that it creates, it creates M random hyperplanes passing through origin m could be one two three four five six anything m number of random hyperplanes passing through origin 
so for the simplicity what i have created here i have created two orange planes or two orange lines or two random hyperplanes okay now once that has been created so the hash value will be something like you can consider a list of dimension m okay so the number of hyperplane will be the same number of dimension in a list now why this list will come i will show you so okay so what is that we have two hyperplanes right now if you see this two hyperplane actually segregates these neighboring points into two particular zone so these points are in this zone you can say okay in this zone and these neighboring points are in this zone right okay fine now what it does it will check it will take each and every point it will first take x1 and it will do that w1 transpose x1 and w2 transpose x1 okay so now if you see x1 is in the same direction for both w1 and w2 so both the w1 transpose x1 and w2 transpose x1 will be a positive value okay right so what i am doing is that for x1 i am putting plus 1 and plus 1 because for w1 transpose x1 is also positive the polarity is positive and for w2 transpose x1 is also positive so the polarity is positive so i am creating a list of plus 1 and plus 1 so that's what that list is coming so the number of hyperplanes random hyperplanes we have created or the algorithm has created it will also create the same number of elements in, inside the list and that will be your hash value for that particular point so h of x1 is plus 1 and plus 1 similarly h of x2 will be plus 1 and plus 1 because both are in the same side or same direction of w1 and w2 similar to x3 x4 x5 x6 so for all these points the hash value will be similar and it will be a list of containing plus 1 and plus 1 now if you see for x7 x8 x9 x12 x10 x11 both are in the opposite direction of w1 and w2 so their dot product will always be negative so we are creating the negative polarity here and the uh, hash value of x7 x8 x9 everything will be minus 1 and minus 1 because both are in the opposite side of w1 and w2 okay so it should be x7 not x1 that's a typo okay so what you can see like the hash value for all these neighboring points are same the hash value for all the neighboring points are same right once it is same it will create a hash table so the hash table has two components hash table key and hash table value so in the hash table key the hash value the unique hash value will be generated so the unique hash value is plus one and plus one and for this unique hash value what are the points are there x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 so that means all these neighboring points and similarly for the hash value minus one and minus one what are the neighboring points are there x7 x8 9 10 11 12 so all these points right now consider once the hash table has been created now consider there is a point or a query point is x cube okay now what i will do i will do w1 transpose x cube w2 transpose x cube what will be the value for w1 transpose x cube it will be minus one obviously because it's less than zero we are just taking the polarity minus one it's not exactly minus one we are just take up taking the polarity okay if w transpose x is less than zero we will take the polarity as minus one if w transpose x is greater than equals to zero we will take the polarity as plus one so here you can see x cube is actually in the opposite of both w1 and w2 so x q will be having a hash value of minus one and minus one right so if minus one and minus one is a hash value what are the neighboring what are the nearest neighbors this now if k value is three then you just calculate only those distances and find out the most nearest neighbor or k nearest neighbors or three nearest neighbors so isn't it, isn't it fine right so this is how locality sensitive hashing is used it drastically reduces the time but it does not give you a hundred percent accurate answer but it will give you some answer with a very high confidence okay okay so so this is uh, this is the second part of uh, optimized optimized kna uh, this is the end of the video uh, i hope you have enjoyed if you like the video do subscribe for the future videos and do share with your friends and like the video Till then, have a nice day.
and happy machine learning. Thanks. Thanks for watching.